Another thing that I think was quickly mentioned that I need to highlight here is this event happening at the end of the week, end of the month. So I would have probably went to this. This is Dweller are going to be hosting or basically, you know, programming the entire night um, at Berghain. Um, they're going to take over Berghain main floor on Friday and Panorama Bar. And if all things been equal, and maybe if I could afford both, I would. But because the 25th of March date, it's going to cover my ability to go to Berghain and obviously also go to Panorama Bar to go see uh, for the Power Disco Night. Uh, powerhouse night sorry with Finn Johansson and DJP which I love so I can basically kill two birds with one stone but if not if it was just a Bergheim thing I was going for I would definitely change my dates and go for this so Dweller is one of the kind of foremost and maybe one of the biggest um you know uh black centric um dance music festivals out there in North America and for them to bring this over to Europe and also have it all be an entirely black lineup is absolutely incredible in my opinion and it's really great to see because i remember mentioning it beforehand offhandedly and someone mentioned it before like in the comments saying that i should actually be offended which i'm not really but i guess what they mean because i was like oh i don't really see many people in fold you know playing there who are black for the most part even though i love fold and i love it and i think it's amazing i also didn't think it was important because i feel like the the struggle of a dj is really kind of it's not really um limited to your skin color it's kind of just a struggle in general because it's not and it's like kind of like doing stand up there is no direct path to the top you kind of have to kind of you know zig and zag to kind of get your way there so to include topics of like you know color and race and sexual orientation to get you bookings is just a bit weird to me but that person in my comments did say no it's an issue it really is something you should think about um and maybe highlight because it is kind of <laughs> it is kind of you know messed up that a club like fold that's really cool and um and really amazing out there is kind of uh you know obviously got a big catchment area and kind of appeals to a big group of people has not been able to kind of maybe reflect the people that go to the rave onto the lineup but anyway it could be a number of reasons but i just think to myself like there's that or, there's my position there which is maybe a little bit too forgiving a little bit too sitting on the fence and then there's also what dweller do where they're unapologetically black they just book who they book they present how they present it and that's it either you like it or you don't and the uncompromising way that they presented it and now it's kind of evolving and they're kind of pushing it and now it's kind of got to a stage where they're doing nights that they're going to be doing at Burkheim is absolutely incredible especially when you think about how much pushback Frankie and co got with this woman when this woman first started about being essentially an answer or an antidote to the all white, all Caucasian, all male lineups that existed in like in festivals and stuff, and representing people who are kind of you know that fell between the margins or were maybe ostracized based on their color, race, creed, sexual orientation, whatever it may be, and then they got absolutely lambasted for it, right? And sometimes by other women, which is absolutely bizarre. And now we're in a position where I feel like you know this woman basically had to take the they were kind of the sacrificial lamb when it comes to that sort of stuff because now I feel like especially in London most of the popping parties and raves and whatnot and festivals are the ones where they are very specifically a, a made to appeal to a particular community a particular niche they're not going for the general consumer person who wants to see Sven Vaal play or Richie Horton play they want to appeal to their community whether it's queer whether it's LGBTQ whether it's gay whether it's whatever BIPOC whatever they're exactly directing those people and those are the ones that have really been popping off and I feel like a lot of it has come because of all the struggles and the pain that flipping um, this woman had to kind of suffer for and they're now kind of you know reaping the benefits and the beauties of it because of their sacrifice but also it's lovely now that this woman reincarnated kinder which is dweller is now able to kind of reap those rewards and enjoy those fruits also and you would hope that this lineup that they have coming up on the 31st of march in Bergen and Panorama will be something that's not the only thing hopefully they have opportunity to kind of take this festival and this tour around the world around Europe especially Europe because I feel like this education or kind of seeing black faces play this type of music dance music which I love which essentially is rooted in blackness anyway and have it presented again in this kind of way unapologetically just dance what it does with some of the best teachers in the world is the best way to I think I won't say re-educate people because it comes across a little bit disingenuous a little bit insulting but just a kind of way a better way to sort of present it and sort of highlight hey these voices these artists this type of expression does exist because a lot of the time when those debates are happening online i feel like people just don't know it exists or the references are just too far back in terms of you know maybe some detroit legends chicago legends that people don't really look at too much and it's very difficult for kids nowadays to kind of be able to join the dots but if you just put those people up front 
and you know center and say hey perform you're playing the same type of music the levels are still high the production is still amazing the party's popping people are dancing it's amazing it, like it, you'll be like okay cool i get it now and I think that's where it kind of needs to go. But in general, the lineup looks great. It's Dweller at Berghain. The flyer looks really awesome too. Um, 31st of March. Um, main room, you've got Dream Crush Alive. You've got D Strange playing. You've got Juliana Huxtable and Shy Boy. Um, every time I see Juliana Huxtable, I have to share my <laughs> very awkward encounter with her because I feel like it was absolutely hilarious and said more about me and um, my inability to, I want to say read the room and also just to kind of leave people alone <laughs> in general. Because <laughs> I remember, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, mistaken i actually came out the toilet um of the panorama bar toilets after doing the fattest line ever and my head was spinning so i was a little bit you know wasn't in my best of shape but um, that's not an excuse and then as i came into the panorama bar i see julian hoxtable there with a couple of friends talking and you know they're not talking like a deep conversation from what i can say so i thought it'd be you know okay to kind of say hi and say hey enjoyed your set I go over and I make sure as well, which I did, which I usually do. I usually couldn't shake someone's shoulder or tap them and stuff. I make sure not to do that. I make sure just to kind of wave and kind of get her attention without touching. And she turns around. I'm like, hey, great set or something. And the look I got back from Julian Huxtable was a mix of confusion, disgust, um, apathy, uh, resentment. Uh, I don't know. It was like a mix of loads of things in one. <laughs> And then it kind of reminded me again. I was like, yeah, man, what? I always got this rule in my head. It kind of reminds me, I was like, I got my rule of never speaking to DJs because, for the most part, when you meet them, especially speak to them in person, it usually is always kind of bad, especially in a rave environment because, you know, they're high, you're high, whatever, sometimes, or whatever. They're annoyed, they're tired, or just generally, they just might not be good people. They might be amazing DJs, but not the nicest person to speak to. So it can maybe taint how you look at them, which is not fair also because you should be judging them based on what they do behind the decks and not if they reply to your messages or are nice to you when you say hi to them sometimes. So I, f I walked away from that experience thinking, you know what, that's the first and last time that I do that. And I'm also not going to let that experience taint how I look at the DJ. So I've still listened to Junior Huxtable sets. I'm still keeping an eye out for releases and stuff. And, you know, still being a fan from afar. He hasn't tainted it completely. This is not like a law cross situation where, you know, I had one sketchy encounter or d DM exchange with said person and now I'm kind of, you know, you you're dead to me. Type of type. It's not there. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm sensible now. I've grown up. Like, hey, it was my fault. I shouldn't have said anything anyway. We're in Panorama Bar. Everyone's doing crazy stuff anyway. The last place you want to have a conversation with your fans is the Panorama Bar flipping <laughs> dance floor but yeah big up Julian Huxable Shy Boy also and in Panama Bar sick lineup also you have here Byron the Great Low Vision River Moon Stacey Hot Wax Hale absolutely banging lineup and again really important that this is happening especially with it being a North American based festival them doing this in Europe given how fraught and contentious the relationship is or even the conversations around the techno house music disco events origins in black culture and black history and having that conversation in real time on the dance floor with records with vibes with people them is going to be sick because I'm sure all the blacks in Berlin which there's a few of them but you know they act a bit bougie sometimes you know it's a really strange experience bumping into some fellow black people in Bergheim sometimes there's this vibe of like especially if there are laws with a lot of white people they're like oh no I want to be the only cool black friend in my social group or sometimes they're really friendly overly friendly like super cool um, which I always love but it's just funny but anyway regardless I'm sure they're all going to come out and have a great time everyone's going to be blast and I wish I could be there I really do but I'm sure it's going to be absolutely amazing so big up Dweller for being able to put that event together that's going to be absolutely crazy